So thank you everyone for having me here, and I'm sorry for my really bad accent and so on. We're all from the US right now, I'm sorry. So I'm gonna start with a small video because my, my throat is broken. I hope this works. This is the video that made me who I am. Jackie and I are on a mission to stop piracy. If this were a movie, we could take on the bad guys ourselves. But this is the real world. We need your help. When you buy pirate movie and music, you support criminals. Now this criminals are counterfeiting other things like electronics and medicine. Take action. Demand the real thing. Help us stop piracy. Let's terminate it. I'm really sorry, this is a real video. Um, have anyone seen this before? Yeah, a few people. The reason why you've seen it is because you didn't download films from the internet, because you only saw this if you had a DVD that was an original. Because when you rip a movie and you put it on the internet, you take away the crap in the beginning. Um, <laughs> so I don't really understand why these really, really rich people are calling us terrorists for not you know, paying them more money. I, I never really got it. It was really strange for me. I saw this the first time, and also, did you notice the quality? This is the best quality that you can find of this video on the internet. And this is how bad they are at marketing. Um, and apparently I'm good at marketing for them. Uh, but anyhow, so uh, back in like 2005, this was a really big discussion about file sharing and, and piracy and so on on the internet. Um, and I found, I found a lot of other people that was interested in this. Uh, and there was a group in Sweden called anti pirat Bureau. That means the Bureau Against Piracy. And we didn't really like what they were doing. They were sending out press releases saying that we're losing so and so much of our BNP, uh, GDP each year because of people's illegal file sharing and so on. And we thought it was bullshit. So we founded pirat Bureau, the Bureau for Piracy. Uh, basically copying their name, remixing it a little bit to make it good. Um, and then we started projects. And one of the projects that we started is, of course, the Pirate Pay. Uh, anyone used the Pirate Pay? Yes. So many people lying, they're not shouting out. It's strange. And Pirate Pay was never, let, let me tell me the story here. It's like, Pirate Pay was never good. It's still the one, one of the most sucky websites on the internet. Nothing works. But the reason why Pirate Bay became big is because we had a different narrative in mind. So we were not interested in just file sharing and so on. We were interested in why people were file sharing. We were not super interested in just the technology. It was why the technology. So for us, it was really good that people could use torrents, which was a much more efficient way for people to share files. It's much more inclusive because anyone who has a computer, whatever you, if you have a lot of movies or not, you could still file share. Um, so Pirate Bay was more or less um, an ideology for us, that we wanted to do something about file sharing and help people to file share. So in the beginning, Pirate Bay was in Swedish. And we noticed like all of the website was in Swedish. And we noticed that we started becoming more and more popular around the world because all of a sudden there was a lot of people that started uploading and downloading a lot of Spanish content. And it turned out that people were shutting down these different torrent and file sharing systems because they had a lot of legal pressure. Um, and it was really strange to wake up one morning and uh, out of the top 100 list, like 90% was in Spanish, which we don't speak. Um, and the most downloaded torrent at the time was, of course, the Swedish language book, because people didn't understand Pirate Bay. Um, <laughs> so that, that's very strange. But what happened is that all of the other people running torrent sites and file sharing, they started getting these threatening letters. I'm going to show you what one of these looks like. Um, this is one we got uh, from a German company called Linotype that own all of these fonts and so on that, that you all use, like Helvetica. Um, and they send out these contracts called cease and desist declarations where you have to sign and give them money and so on and blah, blah, blah. And we, we noticed everyone got these. And they, they, the guys running these other torrent sites, they shut down because they got really scared of being sued for millions and millions and millions and of dollars and so on. Um, and it was scary to most people, but we decided we're gonna do something about this. Um, so first of all, we like copying. So we decided we're gonna send this back, uh, but we're gonna copy the contract and just reverse it so that they owe us money and instead of us stopping allowing people to download, they should stop sending letters like this. Uh, and because they complained about fonts, of course we used all of the fonts that they complained about <laughs> in the letter uh, and sent it back to them. And this is like typically what we did all of the time. We questioned people's narrative. We questioned people's way of thinking about things. Um, and the bad thing about sending a clever letter like this that I can admit now that I, I wrote it uh, is that, of course, they don't reply. Instead, they call the police, which was also kind of interesting. Uh, we, of course, also published all of these letters. So the, it was very interesting because I, I think 7% of the traffic to Pirate Bay one time was only to the legal threats on Pirate Bay, which is not copyrighted, by the way, uh, which was really interesting. So, do you know what this is? Have you seen one of these? 
Anyone from the Nordics? Anyone from Scandinavia? This is a... Yes, great. Sweden. Oh, you don't have polar bears. This is a polar bear. So when we got letters, um, when we got letters from, from people in the US, especially, especially in the US, about copyright and infringement and so on, we sent them pictures like this. It's a great reply. And then they reply back saying, like, what does it mean? And I said, it's a polar bear. What do you mean? And of course, they're like, yeah, but what does a polar bear have to do with copyright? And I said, like, well, this guy and his mother is standing outside my window trying to kill me. I don't have time for copyright issues. <laughs> Priorities, you know? Of course, as this woman said before, Sweden, we don't have polar bears in Sweden. Only Norway. I'm half Norwegian, so I can brag about polar bears. This is very funny. So basically, when we got all of these letters, uh, we responded in a funny, ironic way, telling people to fuck off, pushing things up their ass, using these languages, which is now interesting because Harvard is using this in their uh, copyright uh, courses. I'm not sure it's good or bad examples, but it's at Harvard, which is always good. Um, we also send world maps to show where we're not part of the United States. You can invade, you usually do. Do it first, then decide what we should do. We were very, very fucking annoying, to be honest. Uh, so what happens when you're annoying? Uh, you have more annoying things to do. Uh, does anyone know North Korea? Or just Korea, as we call it? <laughs> We've been hosted in North Korea. Or we claim to be hosted in North Korea. Um, and just to show off, like on the 1st of April, we usually do an April's Fool's joke. Uh, one of the most popular ones was probably the second time we, we said we were hosted in North Korea. Long story short, Sweden and North Korea has a special bond. North Korea has screwed Sweden over for like $200 million. They owe Sweden a lot of money. That's why Sweden has an embassy in North Korea, and also North Korea has an embassy in Sweden, which is really interesting. So we said we're hosted in North Korea, and we stole all of North Korea's IP space for a week, because we could. And we also faked that the whole, uh, like the internet, that the traffic for the internet uh, for North Korea went through us. So we not only stole the IP space, we made it look that we were actually hosted in the physically in North Korea by showing off our technical skills. And I'm sorry, but North Korea couldn't use the internet for that week because we had their IP space. Uh, I think that's a problem, but you know, art has their, you know, has to do something with art. Uh, but people were not really, really sure about if this is true or not. So of course I had to go there and I had to <laughs> meet with Kim Jong-un to show him how Pirate Bay works. He's really happy about this. Uh, this is really good. I sent out this press release uh, with this picture, like just showing off. He downloads a lot of torrents um, <laughs> using all of the bandwidth until that week when we stole the IP space. He was really upset about that, but it's okay. So we did all of these things, and people were always confused about how we managed to do things. Uh, and it's because we are not really clever. We're stupid, and we don't have like, any of these normal limitations that people have. Um, that's why also when Wired write about us, even though it is on the last day of, uh, of March, which is somewhere in the 1st of April, uh, we do low orbit server drones, we call it LOS. Um, Wired published them under the, can you see this? It says under the topic of war. That's what we do. We do war on the internet. Um, this is also on the blog, uh, blog by Mr. Spock, using Raspberry Pis and stuff. Like, we always do these weird things, and people believe us because we always manage to make the narrative kind of truthful. Um, we also tried to put Pirate Bay on the stock exchange in Sweden. Long story short, the guy that had the company that ran the, that wanted to buy Pirate Bay and put it on the stock exchange got kicked out, and then they went to prison. Uh, it's a really funny thing. I still call this an art project. Um, we also went to Venice Biennial because it is the biggest art biennial you know, so we had to go there. And because Pirate Bay is illegal in Italy for some reason, we lost the court case there, I think. Maybe we won in the end. I never follow all of the court cases about the Pirate Bay. Um, but during the Venice Biennial, you know, which is really, really fancy, we were there exhibiting uh, uh, a lot of pyramids made out of paper uh, that people could upload. So we had no computers there. The police of Italy came to, and did a raid against the Venice, Venice Biennial because Pirate Bay can't be in Italy. They did not know what they were looking for. It is funny. We had private investigators following us, which is a really long story. Um, it is, I'm going to give you a tip. If people do things online, you, there's no need to actually send people to physically follow you. Uh, <laughs> and the, the, the way I found out is that there was a guy parked outside my apartment that was taking pictures at night in his car with the flashlight on. Not very clever, so I went over to his car and I, I wrote down the number of plates because he, he just drove away. Uh, it was a really fancy car, and on my streets there's not a lot of fancy cars. Um, and I know this thing called the internet, and also in Scandinavia we are very public about things. So I, I checked who owns this car, and it was a Danish company called Private Investigators AS. 
they're not that clever. Um, and they were saying in court that they were trying to use this private investigator's information to kind of figure out where their servers were. There was also a picture on the website where they were with the GPS location, but that's over to do it. Oh, sorry. So, I don't have a lot of time to speak. I'm going to show you a small video clip about what happens next, because we obviously we won this whole, uh, let's say, PR war uh, in the press. Till att börja med så tror jag inte på att det skulle finnas någon form av av idé hos vanliga ungdomar om att upphovsrätt skulle vara fel eller så. Det, 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 det tror jag är en myt och den har, den har liksom de här, den här kopimistsekten varit väldigt duktiga på att marknadsföra. So this woman, um, she is the European representative of Hollywood. So she started calling us a cult in every interview she did, um, which is really, really interesting. She has two clients. It's Hollywood, good clients. Then she's also the European representative of the Church of Scientology. <laughs> so what do you do when a person from the Church of Scientology, who actually sued the Swedish government for copyright infringement, uh, calls you a, a cult? Maybe there is something good to this. So um, in classic thing, when we... You know, people call us pirates, then we make it cool to be a pirate, then Hollywood helps us by making movies about cool pirates. Um, not very clever. So we did this. This is wild. Some people seem uh, to worship technology, but now it's being recognized as a religion. Yes, in Sweden, a church whose central tenet is the right to file share has been formally recognized by the Swedish government. It's called the Church of Copy Meism, uh, I guess, Copy Meism or Copy Mism. Okay, and it claims that copy acting, sharing information through copying, is akin to a religious service. The big yeah, it is quite funny. This is a guy from the, the Church of Copy Mism. Uh, he looks like Gru, right? <laughs> It is really funny. Uh, so we are a church. We're a registered church in Sweden. Uh, it's 50 euros to register a church. Uh, not very expensive. And it's also really interesting because I was Googling, uh, searching for a lot of information about is there a good uh, thing about being a cult. It turns out that, uh, you know, if you're a religion, um, people are not allowed to spy on your, the communication between you and a priest. So all religious communication is exempt from data retention laws. They're exempt from monitoring laws by in the Swedish and, and the European Union. Which is really strange, because they always claim that they want to take, you know, find jihadists trying to do things for religious reasons. Um, but at least when I realized this, I realized like the Mormon church, which, which is also a recognized uh, church in Sweden, they consider everyone a priest. So I, I decided like, maybe we can have priest-to-priest -priest communication instead of peer-to-peer. -peer. Um, and then everyone's protected. <laughs> And, and it's, it is quite funny, because if you went, go to court and say that someone has downloaded something that you own, um, and for copyright infringement reasons, you also admit to have violated that person's religious beliefs, and there's four years in prison for that. <laughs> That's quite bad. But there's also a problem. I'm going to be a little bit serious, just a little bit. It's late, anyhow. I have a problem like, uh, with, with all of this activism that I'm doing and all of the art stuff. The problem is not about like, technology. That's what everyone, every time I go to a technology conference, it's always like, how can we use technology to fix things? And the problem is not technology, it's people that create technology. It's one of the biggest problems, because there was a guy speaking here before who said a lot of in, uh, really interesting things, but he said that technology is neutral. It is not neutral. The person who creates technology has a reason for doing so. And I'm not really happy about that. I think we should talk more about technology and ethics as one thing that needs to be combined. So we had a few years ago, we had a discussion in Sweden called, uh, in, in all of the world, about the treaty called ACTA, which we managed to stop on a European level. And we as activists, we're still thinking that this is a great thing. But the problem is that every time we stop one of these really bad laws from happening, we also just wait for the next one to happen. And the biggest problem right now with activism and, and, and everything on the internet is, of course, centralization. This is a picture from 10 years ago about how big everything was, so different sites on the internet. Do you remember any of these almost? Except like Facebook and Google and, uh, and so on. Uh, everything else got bought by the big five players like Apple, Google, Amazon and so on. Uh, except Pirate Bay, of course, on the corner over there. Uh, no one wants to buy that because that go, then you go to prison. Um, <laughs> but this is a problem. Like, we have all of these things. And then when we discuss new technology, we always discuss, like, we don't have a, this ethical discussion. Like, uh, I don't want, like, we have music today owned by Spotify. We stream music. We don't have it on our computers anymore. It's owned by Spotify. What happens when we have food printing? I, you shouldn't eat meat, by the way, but in, in the future, at least you could print and download meat. I'm so over time already. I had lots left to speak about. Uh, but this, 
this is the thing that would be a problem. You want to go to Foodify and stream your food? I don't want to do that. Let's have a discussion about ethics and ownership of everything in the future. We don't create things anymore. We just have like virtual things, like Uber and Alibaba and Airbnb. Do they have products? No, they just have, we went from like this product to a virtual product to virtually no product whatsoever. And this is a centralization process going on. Internet was made to be decentralized, but we are ourselves centralizing everything on top of the internet. And this is also a problem, because all of these things that are happening with like, self-driving cars, we're super happy about them, but who owns these self-driving cars? Who owns the information about where they can and can't go? Because I don't want to go in a self-driving car that can't drive me to a certain place because someone has bought or sold an illegal copy of something there. This is the thing that's going to happen in the future, because we allow people to own and decide over this data. It is something we should discuss much more. And everything is about the narrative. So last year I made a machine just to question the narrative of how much money you actually lose from a copy. So I made a small Raspberry Pi. This machine only makes a copy of uh, one song, Crazy by Gnarl Sparkly, which I really hate because I've heard it so many times. It makes a copy and then it deletes the copy and makes another one. And it, th this machine just shows how many copies it's made and how much money that is losses in losses according to the record industry. And this, I think this morning when I, uh, last morning when I left, it was like seven billion in losses for one record company according to their own uh, narrative, which is not okay. Like that, that's not gonna happen. No one loses any money when you copy music. I also started my own nationalist party because, you know, I'm not a nationalist, but we have a lot of nationalist people in, in Scandinavia. So I started an extreme nationalist party because we have indigenous people in my countries. So there's like 100,000 out of 10 million in Sweden are actually from Sweden. They're called the Sami, indigenous people. And we have a party called the Swedish Democrats. So I started the Sami Democrats. And I just copied all of their political program and I said the same, but I just included Swedish people as immigrants. And I said, like, if you don't like immigration, when are you going home? And it was really funny because I sent out all of these like, debate articles and so on, and I quoted a little bit from the Swedish Democrats, a little bit from Hitler. It's all the mix, you know. Uh, it sounded really, really strange. And people thought this was serious. Uh, and people wanted us to actually run for the election. I'm not going to do that. It's a little bit too weird. Um, I also like the Sami stuff because I, and this, this is my new project that I'm doing right now to make people anonymous. You can buy anonymous domain names. So I'm actually not just doing pr pranks. I'm also doing technical stuff that are really, really important for people. So, and this is a Sami hut called Anyala, which is my only sales pitch today. Uh, Anyala is a small hut protecting people's stuff from predators. So people in the Sami people used to put meat in there. You shouldn't put meat anywhere except let animals have it. Uh, but to protect people from, from, uh, from losing that to animals. I also started Flatter, which someone said before. Flatter is a micropayment system because I, I didn't like the narrative of us giving money to the record companies. I wanted to make a distributed, a decentralized pros uh, uh, project where you could give money to a system and then just distribute it to lots of people. So Flatter is basically like file sharing with money. Um, you should check it out. I have not so much time because I have a really embarrassing video I have to show you. Um, I've been working quite a lot with uh, activism and, and politics and so on. The guy said before that I'm a politician. I'm not. I just tried once. You know when you're wanted by Interpol and you don't really have a way out of it? Uh, you don't? You know? Anyone been wanted by Interpol? <laughs> not yet. So this panel was supposed to be a future of crime. I'm just going to say the future of crime is like we're all going to be criminals. That's the that's future of crime. Really simple. Uh, but so a few years ago, I was wanted by Interpol. And... Uh, it is really cool to be wanted by Interpol. For three years, I was wanted by Interpol. And I went to lots of conferences, speaking and so on. Uh, they didn't catch me because I used my middle name when I traveled. Uh, <laughs> true story. I think most of the people at Interpol used to be private investigators, but uh, <laughs> I'm not really sure. Anyhow, two years ago, this is a screenshot from two years ago. There was the biggest election in Denmark in history. And the most seen things on TV, one hour before uh, closing remarks, was Ditte and Louise, which is a great, funny uh, Danish uh, comedian, uh, comedians. They're really funny. The second most watched TV thing on TV is the Swedish royal wedding. So monarchy is, more, is trumping the third thing, which was the election night. And this is how little people are interested in democracy and, and the way that we're governed today. Um, so I decided also the year before, because I was wanted by Interpol. Did I mention that? It's really cool. I was wanted by Interpol. Uh, I decided like the best way to not be wanted by Interpol anymore is like I, let's run for, for the parliament because there's some guys running this party called the Pirate Party and I decided I can run in the Finnish elections for the Pirate Party uh, and if I win, I get diplomatic immunity. 
So basically, when I talk to, to voters, they ask, what's your promise? Like, yeah, actually, like uh, the Swedish government, which Finnish people hate, uh, they want they put me on this list for international terrorists or whatever. Um, so if you vote for me, the P Swedish people will be pissed off. Uh, so I got a lot of nationalist votes because they don't like Swedes. Uh, and, and then of course, I, I, had, I didn't want to speak shit about people or anything. So I just said like, if I win, I get diplomatic immunity. It's funny, right? It's funny. Uh, and I decided I, wanna, I don't want to talk shit about people and I want to brag and lie to people. So I made, the most viewed video ever uh, uh, for a European Union election, uh, doing differently, because the, the, the thing you should think about is narratives. Don't question your own narrative, question everyone else's narrative. So here's my end video. I'm gonna go hide. It's really embarrassing. I must say, on the, the day of election, I got eight full pages in the biggest newspapers in Finland asking, who the fuck is this guy? Uh, so it was a great campaign. Uh, I didn't release the last two videos because they were too embarrassing. So thank you very much for having me and sorry for bothering you. Sure, sit here. <laughs> uh, uh, wow, uh, that was that was utterly incredible. I, I, I love the um, I love the church story. Uh, I wonder. I what didn't tell the all of it. Oh, there's, there's more. You want to hear the rest <laughs> of the story? Is there is there a prayer? Our downloads that arts in server. Hallowed be thy foul no, name. No, I, I I don't want to uh, go into that. But <laughs> there are two really important stories. If you have time, if you want to listen to the stories. Well, we're gonna actually take some audience yes. questions. So if you want to know those stories, please jump up and ask for some of those stories. We're right, gonna do something called some Turning video. Point now, and uh, Peter has a couple of minutes to answer, or a couple of seconds even to answer Takes audience some. questions. If you'd like to answer a question, please. Please just cue by the Come stage here. So let's go. All right, it's, it's exciting to be here in the first place. Um, so uh, we're talking about a future, right? Um, can you describe us or like tell me um, what would be uh, like the most terrifying version of a future crime in tomorrow's hyper-connected and digital day gone wrong? Everything has gone wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's the thing. Like if you look about the future and all of these things, you must realize what's going on right now. So we centralized all of our data to a guy called Mark Zuckerberg, uh, who's basically the biggest dictator in the world. Uh, if you look at it, he's not like, elected by anyone and so on. We already had this movement uh, where everything who, that it has gone wrong. Uh, Trump is in basically control over this data that Mark Zuckerberg has. Uh, so I think we're already there. Um, I, I don't think there's any way to stop it. All right, thanks. Next question. Oh, sorry. Do we have a next question? I win. <laughs> <laughs> Just leap across the front of the stage and go! Pleasure to be here. So my next question would uh, start off with the story. So the, in the movie, The Beautiful Mind, Nash, the famous mathematician, says that the best strategy to follow is if I, best in accordan if I act best in accordance to my values and my team values. So my question would be, do you think we should unite all the teams together as one, or do you think we should have separate teams playing alongside each other, and why? So, um, every time I start a project, I also start the, my opposing party. The reason is, then I control both narratives. Yeah. So very often, when I, I, a few times I've invaded countries, uh, according to internet and so on, but I also ran the, 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 the rebel movement against that, because then you control the whole narrative of it. And it's really, really important. I don't think you should centralize everything. I believe in decentralization. So if you have one team, you're going to be vulnerable. Uh, th there's a really interesting guy in Germany who, who runs a newspaper. He has 20 different pseudonyms when he writes, because he, it doesn't look good to be alone. So it's much better that he writes under different names. And I think it's the really same. If you're not enough people to do things, fake that you're more people. Um, so <laughs> you should be many different teams. 
Thank you. And you have a way to create fake identities, don't you? You've Let's been talk about that later. Let's talk about that later. And next question. <laughs> Just use your middle name. Well, if we, we, we don't have any other questions, but I do want to ask you, you said something rather wonderful, which was, uh, you're so pleased that Donald Trump won. In one way, yes. Uh, actually, many ways. Uh, the reason is, I, I really hate Trump, to be honest. Like, he's, an, he's the biggest asshole I've seen for quite a long while. Uh, I've seen a lot of assholes. I've been in prison. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, but, uh, no, but the, the, prob- the, the interesting thing is with Trump is that uh, when, when Trump won, people started like, taking away the power from the US. So we started decentralizing power back to like, last week Merkel said that we can't just depend on the US anymore, which actually brings some sort of, of uh, decentralization of power and decentralization of, of control, which is really good because then you don't have this loose cannon like Trump being able to do a lot of things. Uh, the same thing goes for like, I'm hoping something would happen to Facebook that you have to decentralize the information. Uh, and one of the things that people don't really give Trump credit for is that he stopped TTIP, which was this really bad transatlantic uh, treaty for copyright and internet control and a lot of other things, which we as internet activists have been trying to stop for like 10 years. We really wanted to stop it. For the wrong reason, he stopped it, of course. He doesn't like free trade, but at least he stopped it. So he's actually been better to the internet than, Trump, than uh, Obama. Our next question, and probably our final question. Hello. So I would like to ask you, if you are so much against centralization, why are you trying to centralize all of the internet contacts inside of the Pirate Bay? Which, con- uh, oh, th- that's one of the things. I've been hoping Pirate Bay to die for like five, six years. And the reason is, <laughs> when we started the Pirate Bay, we decided it's going to close down on the 10th birthday because it's really important that you burn the old so you get space for the new. And people have been trying to like, uh, build new torrent sites, but they always get s- scared. And there's always this thing that, but Pirate Bay is always there, and they will always take care of things. So one of the biggest problems I have with Pirate Bay is, of course, that Pirate Bay is still running. So someone should make something which is better, looks better, is not called something with pirates, which is the biggest thing, you know, I I would never call it pirate something again. Uh, Pirate aesthetics is really ugly. But that's the problem. There's no one else to pick up the gauntlet, which I really hope for. So I hope one day there will be a big raid, Pirate Bay will just go down, and there will be someone coming out of the ashes of this, starting something better. Oh, 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 oh,